is the Mistress Carrie Situation Report for July 25th, 2023. Your daily entertainment headlines, industry info, and everything rock. Mudvayne are bringing the psychotherapy sessions tour to the Xfinity Center in Mansfield, Massachusetts on July 30th. The newly reunited Coal Chamber, Nonpoint, Butcher Babies, and Guar are also on the lineup. Tickets are on sale now. Check the links in the show notes of this episode to get them. Punk supergroup LS Dunes released their Lego-themed video for the song Grey Veins last month, and now Lego has apparently contacted the band's label, Fantasy Records, asking that the video be taken down. Frank Iero from My Chemical Romance fame and the guitarist in LS Dunes took to social media to issue a statement regarding Lego's legal action saying that he was offended that the company encourages creativity such as Lego, of which he's been a lifelong loyal customer, and why would they try to stamp out his own creative endeavors? He said in his statement, I love your company because you gave us bricks and taught us that we didn't have to accept the world as it was. We could see what was possible and build it ourselves. I've taken that inspiration and created a universe of my own, and now you want to squash it. Why? Over the weekend, Cher announced in an Instagram post that she's going to be launching her own line of gelato, saying, quote, this is real. The 77-year-old posted a short video to Instagram showing off a bright orange and pink ice cream truck featuring black and white photos of herself enjoying a cone. The brand's name, Cherilato, is featured on the side in big, bright blue letters. She said, quote, yup, it's real. I'm launching my own gelato. Watch out, L.A., more to come. Actor and comedian Brett Goldstein, famous for playing Roy Kent on Ted Lasso, is getting ready to head out on his first live stand-up tour of North America this fall. Dubbed the second best night of your life tour, it begins October 5th in Denver. Tickets for the entire tour go on sale this Friday, July 28th through Ticketmaster. That includes a stop in Boston on October 13th, at the Box Center Wang Theater. Extreme have decided to give back to the generations of rock fans who have continuously supported them following the overwhelming response to Rise, the first single from their new album, Six. They've released an alternate version of the single's music video called Rise, Generations on a Mission. The video directed by Nuno Betancourt, Rise, Generations on a Mission, tells the story of two young musicians living the same dream which generations of rock fans and extreme fans have lived and breathed for decades. Creating music, playing music, and sharing that passion on stage or in the audience. And as part of this, extreme and ear music have created a space where fans, bands, and musician friends of extreme spanning the years can come together and share their covers of Rise. Slash has been teasing that a follow-up of his 2010 self-titled album is on the way and could arrive with a significant twist. Speaking to Yahoo Entertainment, the Guns N' Roses guitarist said that his next solo album would be, quote, more blues-oriented. Not only that, but he also said the as-yet unannounced album will be, quote, sort of similar to my first solo record, which saw him team up with a host of guest vocalists including Iggy Pop, Ozzy Osbourne, and the late Chris Cornell. Disturbed announced that they've had to postpone their scheduled Take Back Your Life tour stop in Phoenix over the weekend because they said the extreme temperature in the Valley of the Sun was causing their musical gear to malfunction. The high temps reached 115 degrees Fahrenheit in Phoenix, and excessive heat warnings have endured across Arizona and the Capitol several days this month. Disturbed are currently covering the U.S. with support from Breaking Benjamin and Ginger, saying, quote, tonight's Disturbed show will be postponed due to the excessive heat. The band's equipment is not working properly. Please hold on to your tickets and stay tuned for a rescheduled date. On June 26th, Pantera bassist Rex Brown married his fiance and longtime girlfriend Elena Hennard in a small ceremony without any guests in Spain. On Sunday, July 23rd, Brown, who proposed to Elena in December of 2022 in Bogota, Colombia, shared a photo from the ceremony and wrote in the accompanying caption, quote, some days are diamonds, some days are rocks, 
but this day below made me feel so full of gratitude, it cannot be explained in font. Rex and Elena first met in 1984 and fell in love. In August of 2011, they reunited after 20 years apart and have been together ever since. Pete Davidson will be required to complete 50 hours of community service in order to wipe a reckless driving charge off of his criminal record, according to TMZ. He got charged with reckless driving after crashing his car into a Beverly Hills home back in March. The charge could result in jail time of up to 90 days and or a fine of up to $1,000. But according to TMZ, in addition to the community service, which he can fulfill in New York City at the fire department, where his father worked before passing away during the 9-11 attacks, Davidson must attend 12 hours of traffic school and visit a morgue to see for himself the consequences of reckless driving. Pete Davidson was driving with his girlfriend when he lost control of his Mercedes, drove up on a curb, taking out a fire hydrant before running into a house. No one was injured, and the police determined no drugs or alcohol were involved. Ozzy Osbourne has hit a series of health-related issues over the last few years, which led him to his latest cancellation, being one of the headliners of the inaugural Power Trip Festival this October. Ozzy has now provided a health update with his co-host on Sirius XM's Ozzy Speaks, Billy Morrison, saying, quote, I'm battling through it. For instance, last Monday, I went to have a filter removed because I had blood clots in my legs. They put a filter in your artery to stop the clots from going to your heart and your brain. It sounds worse than it is. So on Monday, I went to have it removed. The blood clots have jammed you all up. So they put a thing down there in my neck, straight down to my groin. He said, quote, it's just disappointment after disappointment. Just get this thing fucking done so that I can go get on with my life, he said. Blur have shared a pair of bonus tracks from their comeback album, The Ballad of Darren, titled The Rabbi and The Swan. The songs appear on the deluxe edition of their first album in eight years, which arrived just a few days ago. And good news coming out of the Ice Nine Kills camp, guitarist Dan Sugarman recently announced that he is cancer-free. He's been stuck at home battling thyroid cancer while his bandmates are out on tour. In the meantime, Ice Nine Kills have been playing huge shows with Bad Wolves and God Forbid guitarist Doc Coyle. And that's your sit rep. For more details on all of the stories, check the links in the show notes of this episode. And don't forget to follow and subscribe to the Mistress Carrie podcast. New full-length episodes come out every Wednesday. Episode 163 featuring George Thorogood is available now. Amplify your career through training and development solutions specifically designed for federal government professionals. From courses to help you attain or retain certification, to individualized coaching services, to programs that hone your leadership skills and business acumen, Management Concepts optimizes your professional development. Online, in person, individually, or groups, it's training that's measurably better. Learn more at managementconcepts.com. That's managementconcepts.com.